Almost everyone has one of these. But who monitors what websites are visited? A new bill wants manufacturers to block content from minors that the bill deems harmful. I definitely do understand and appreciate the importance of online safety. I just think that that should be in the hands of parents more than the government. Tennessee Senator Joey Hensley introduced a bill this year that would ban, quote, harmful material from ever coming across your child's phone. Juniper Russo is a parent of three and says her oldest owns a cell phone. All teenagers sometimes have questions about sexuality or birth control or safe sex or um, LGBT issues or puberty, things that they don't necessarily want their parents' permission to look up and don't necessarily want their parents seeing that they've looked it up. But it still may, depending on who writes the exact nature of what is obscene, it still may be something that would be blocked. So what exactly would this bill block? Pornography is one of them, but all also excessively violent, sadomasochistic things uh, that would deem to be in our code harmful to minors. How often are we actually seeing minors engage themselves in harmful or inappropriate contact via their phone? Oh, I think it's rampant across the state and the country. We took the bill to attorney Jonathan Turner. It really only appears to be going after obscene material. And obscene material is not constitutionally protected. So what's the difference between this filter and other filters that may already exist? The device is required to have the filter pre-installed and pre-activated. But Turner says this bill may not address the issue he sees often. We, we do have an issue with with minors, especially like sexting situations, sending photographs to each other, sending videos that technically would be child pornography. Now, I don't know that a content filter such as this could in any way restrict that. Hensley says there is a way around the restriction with the parent's permission. It would allow the companies to provide a password for an adult if they wanted to, to take the filter off. Parents like Russo still have doubts. It can become so much of a sticky situation where specific legislators' opinions are weighing in on how each of us as individuals choose to protect our children. And I think that that can go downhill really quickly. The chime of a cell phone. One of the many noises teachers and school board members say is causing a distraction during school hours. Cell phones either directly or indirectly drive 90% of the undesirable behavior. Hickson, Brainerd, and Eastridge are three Hamilton County schools with different cell phone policies. Now school board members and teachers are calling for everyone to get on the same page when it comes to policy. I think we, we need a, a unified district-wide policy of some sort. Hamilton County School Board member for District 8, Larry Groan, says he knows firsthand from being a former teacher how distracting cell phones can be in a classroom setting. I would like to see cell phone use severely restricted. Groan says there is 142 school districts, and Hamilton County is one of only four districts without a district-wide policy. And school board members are not the only ones who have noticed the interruption. I had problems with behavior on a daily basis with cell phones. Tanya Dodd is a former teacher for Hamilton County Schools. So I understand for emergency use, but I do think there, there needs to be a stricter policy. And a lot of times administrators are not enforcing the policies at the schools. East Hamilton totally restricts phones. Your phone gets put in your locker and you can get it out when you go to lunch. And then you have to put it back in the locker on your way to your class after lunch. So that's my preference. In the era of social media, Grown says a district-wide policy could prevent situations like this. Let's say there's a fight that's videoed and the victim, if this goes up on social media, they're victimized every time that that video is seen. 